Hi there YouTube, I'm going to make a quick video showing my HVAC ductwork installation. Um, I'll show you some of the tools that I used and how I did it, and then I'll, I'll give you a video overview of the entire system from the furnace through all the ductwork and the plenum and the registers. Uh, so first I want to give a quick shout out to Tractor Man 44. It was his videos and methods that I first came across uh, which started me down this entire project. So uh, big shout out to Tractor Man 44. Uh, it was his videos that I use as a guide. Um, okay, so let me begin. I'm just going to do a voiceover on this video. So I'm just looking at some of the tools that I used. Uh, some round pipe crimpers, green snips. I have two wood chisels there, which I used as a makeshift scribe. Um, of course, I have some um, straight snips there, the orange snips. Uh, I've got my 90 degree elbow. Um, down there on the left, you can see I made my uh, makeshift scribe there with a quarter inch, half inch, three quarters, and a one inch. And then, of course, there's my engineer ruler. Um, I could not get an inside scribed uh, numbers, but nonetheless, it worked really well. I like this much more than a tape measure when I'm um, laying out uh, metal work. Of course, there's my fold bar, three eighths and one inch. And then a really nice uh, tin knockers hammer, <clears throat> which uh, worked very well. I'm really pleased with it. And then there's, of course, this is some of the sheet metal. Um, this is all sitting on, uh, which is what I used uh, with my 36 inch brake, which we will get to shortly. Um, it was a cheap, relatively cheap uh, $200 brake from Harbor Freight. Uh, worked really well, actually. So here we're looking at some of the um, templates I made for squared around that helped me lay out <clears throat> the ductwork. And of course, there were some um, drives and S cleats that I made. Everything was handmade were made on my brake, including the S cleats and the drives. Okay, so here we're looking at some of the um, 90 degree elbows that I made. All of this was made on my brake, um, including the Pittsburgh seam and then the 90 degree bends. Now for the um, curved fittings, I made straight ductwork, um, and then of course I used, um, I just manually bent it um, kind of by hand or on an, use an angle of a table to slowly bend those and then put it together. Um, here you can see this is a, a fortunately not one that I used but this was a mess up but um, it was a split fitting. Um, so here I'm looking at the curved um, 90 degree elbow Um, so all of this I did make on the break, and of course this has been an evolution. So the one in the background there, the, the five mitered um, segmented <clears throat> elbow is kind of how I first started out. And then of course as I watched YouTube videos and found online t guides, um, <clears throat> I experienced, uh, I improved my my designs or my fittings. So that's where the rounded comes in. I, I figured out how to do that after I did the five mitered. So I ended up not using the mitered and I used the... The rounded. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is just a simple transition from a rectangular to a square profile. Um, I did not end up using this one as well, but it's just an example. Uh, there was a lot of redos on this because the ductwork insulation is so difficult in this job. Um, every inch was painstakingly measured and it had to be redone. Okay, so um, I think we're going to move on. Uh, no? Okay, so I'm looking at the squared around. So these are templates that I used. I found this uh, on a YouTube video and basically you can trace this out on a flat sheet metal as I'm showing you here. You trace that out with a marker and then you cut that out and it gives you the proper profile for a squared around. If there's any questions I can go further in the detail um, in a follow-up video. So here's one of the examples of a 36 inch duct segment. I could only make 36 inch segments because my brake was 36 inches. Um, but here's just an example. This is one, it's probably eight by seven um, inch duct, 36 inch long, and you can see the cross break. So there's all my scraps uh, in the middle from the entire job. There's a plenum that I had to rip out and redo. Okay, so here we're coming to the break. Uh, this is the Harbor Freight $200 break. Uh, it did really well. Um, I would love to have better equipment, but um, I'm surprised how well I was able to do with this break. I did reverse the arms on this. They come um, reverse where you push it outward to clamp down the, the apron, but um, I swapped them left and right. I reversed them so that it's pulling forward to clamp down. I find it was much easier and better to work with. Okay, so over here, everything 
that square is what I made, um, the round fittings on the table and the round ductwork, obviously I had to purchase those, but everything else is um, what I made. And these are mismeasurements or redos or designs that I had to um, scrap, a lot of scrap, because um, this was such a learning experience. Um, there's another scrapped uh, five miter. And you can see some of the duck caps that were sitting on the top of those as well. Um, okay, so I think we are now going, okay, I'm gonna show you some squared around transitions. So these have not yet been installed, but you can see I, I purchased the 90 degree elbow, but then on the end there on the left, um, that's a squared around that I made on the brake. And I've masticed it up, of course. And then there's a seven inch to eight inch transition on the other end, but uh, this is just giving an example. Um, of squared around that I made. So basically the entire system is square duct and then the ends last few feet are round pipe and then the transitions to flex pipe. Um, and again Tractor Man 44 I modeled my system after his videos his heat pump installation. Okay and here we were looking at another squared around on a seven inch um, hard pipe. Uh, this is not fully mastic so I have to finish that um, but I'm just giving you an example. All right now we're going to go into the furnace room so here is the furnace it's a three ton 1200 cfm unit with a coil on top um, i wish i could show you the original system before <clears throat> i redid it because it was so bad um, now that's of course factory bought um, round pipe but the plenum here i had to redo and i had to add a six inch transition between the furnace and the coil there's a, a redone transition because the airflow was very poor because it's an A-framed coil, um, and the manual for this furnace says, um, requires you must have a six inch transition. So um, before I had that six inch transition, um, it was poor airflow. And you can see some of the holes there in the plenum for my static pressure testing. Now here is the upper plenum. Um, I tapered it out for improved airflow. I think it's a 20 inch by 13 inch plenum. And then up at the top, it's a 20 inch by 26 inch by 13 inch. There's a Pittsburgh seam, you can see. And I can give some examples of how I did the Pittsburgh. It's actually pretty quick and it's all done on the brake, um, you know, repeatable and consistent. All right, now we're looking at the trunk line above. You can see I had to transition down um, to a 14 by 11 inch. So there's some transitions. Uh, that's been, that's the bathroom connection that's not yet fully uh, finished. So I still have to connect more and I have to screw this plenum down. It's not screwed down yet. If you notice, there were some gaps there. Um, it's a very short trunk. That's the entire trunk. It's about six feet total. It goes from the plenum <clears throat> down to a 14 inch, down to an 11 inch, and then all the branches go off of there. So now we're going to go upstairs directly above that plenum and trunk to show you the very difficult part of this installation. And all of the ceilings in this house are very high. Um, it doesn't keep heat or cooling very well. It's all exposed to the south, so it's just the worst condition. All right, so the upstairs has been completely gutted just to get to this ductwork. It was an enormous project and all the original ductwork went right under a bathroom. So here you can see this is all the new ducting. I'm on top now and I had to run these ducts through the floor joists and I maximized every square inch possible because we had such poor airflow before. So you can see um, how I had to tie in and make these custom um, elbows on the top and you can see uh, they're going to run up and down the floor joists and we will get to that shortly but um, none of these have been drived in yet or um, escalated in yet. And of course, there's the, the first takeoff. It goes under the floor. So I have a, a round pipe going through there. I had to snake it through and then put a flex at the end. So um, this duct to the left did not exist before. So I had to um, add that <clears throat> in that joist. It, uh, it's just going to be extra capacity for one of the rooms that didn't, didn't have ducting before. Um, this middle one here, um, there's a pipe that runs right down, a water pipe that runs right down the side, but it tapers in. So every every segment is custom built. It's a eight inch to a six inch taper down to follow the profile of that pipe. And then it goes further down to seven to six inch. And then you can see it had to narrow in, but then it grew in height just to get through that little area there. Um, and then it flattens out and it goes under the wall. Um, every duct is, is um, measured exactly and it had to be redone due to um, so many um, redos, but it, it was very difficult to get all this to fit. Um, so now we're going into the bathroom. This was a shower. The ducts went right under the shower and the original duct, you can see there was a drain there on the floor. Um, that drain was directly in an old flex duct, literally in the middle. 
collapse at about 50%. And that was the original designers must have done that. That's the way it was. So I had to cut that pipe and I'm going to redo the shower. But nonetheless, now we're looking at a five by five inch um, square pipe that I made. You can see there's another transition. None of these are connected fully yet, but you can see um, how difficult it was to get this. Um, and we're going to go to the other side of this wall. And, and here's the biggest uh, take take off in the entire system and again this was very difficult to measure and get these angles and, and these transitions and it goes under the wall very difficult um, to get that to fit and to be just right and there's a toilet right there to the right so you can see th this was all finished out um, and there were tenants living in this before I started this project so I literally had to demo this entire upstairs of, of my house just to get it get this uh, going so there's a lot of the old duct work a lot of it was some flex and there's some asbestos um, pipe in the background there that was um, it was all just shredded and leaking and undersized okay so now we're looking at um, this is a new register I had to add and there's another register I had to add these did not exist before um, it was very it was a single register it was very small and I'm just showing you the room I know I'm going quick here but the, the ceilings are high in this house and and they're all facing the south so it's very um, difficult to keep it cool. Okay, so now here is a continuation through the wall and again more tapers and transitions um, Barely fit I had to rerun wiring um, To get these to fit I had to rip up the floor obviously um, This previously was a, a flex coming through here and it was literally pinched 50% going through these walls It was a 10 inch flex or a 9 inch flex pinched under the walls um, Just ridiculous and it was the original installation of the the house. I just couldn't believe it um, so of course I took out all that flex and I'm redoing a uh, square pipe, sorry, square duct. And now we're going into the attic, which is kind of the final installation, uh, the final part of the system. Let me get the light on. Okay. So here's a continuation of those first two runs. One's actually going to terminate into the master bedroom downstairs. So we are in the attic and there's the remaining <coughs> runs. Okay. So just kind of giving you an overview there are some of the old uh, registers going to the downstairs rooms and this is uh, the first takeoff for squared around and it goes to a flex duct which goes to the master bedroom downstairs um, of course this flex needs to be straightened out and pulled tight it's not yet complete it's just um, temporarily there and again there's the uh, two new trunks these did not exist before um, they were flex and, and very poorly designed and undersized so um, these are all handmade on my break that 36 inch break and you can see I suspended them from the rafters until I get proper supports put in and you can see the drive on that one duct there is not uh, complete these are all um, this is all just temporary or, or loose fit for now and you can see there in the background um, so I'm, go I'm gonna go do a close-up here but I'm just giving you an overview these two trunk lines go down to the uh, other bedrooms of the house And um, so I'm just giving a minute here. I'm going to walk down to the other end, get a light on there so we can see the end of the system. And um, I don't have any um, walking boards uh, placed on these rafters yet, so it's very difficult to get down here until I kind of finish up this attic a little bit more. Okay, there we got some light. And you know, apologies for the poor video. I don't make many videos, so it's uh, jerky, I know. All right, so here we are at the end of the main trunk line. Um, I actually split this into two eight-inch flex ducts because um, the room it's feeding is just so um, poorly uh, ventilated and it has high ceiling. So there's two takeoffs from that trunk. That's probably an unorthodox um, fitting, but uh, it seems to be working so far. So there's squared around. Um, this is an eight by nine inch duct collapsing down to two um, eight inch rounds. So there's another fitting I made squared around connecting to the flex. And there you can see it goes to two 14 by six registers in that single room. Um, and then the duct behind it, we're also gonna take a look here. So this one is an eight by eight and it's again splits into two. This is not yet finished out. I don't have the square transitions installed yet, but this is going to go directly below um, actually uh, between my legs where we're looking at right now it's going to go to the room behind us that we first entered upstairs and it's going to feed that room and it's going to um, split out into two branches and feed the, the the wall and the floor of that room and there's the rafters that it's going to go through and there's the actual um, register and for the most part that's the entire system um, 
it's very difficult to get all this measured and, and there was a lot of learning involved. Um, I am pretty proud of how well I got the system finally working and, and designed. Um, and I think there's a lot of optimizations I can, I can make. Um, I think here I'm just showing you that corner. That, that corner was where the duct has to be run for that last room. It's gonna go down under the floor um, and into that register that was in the floor in that room. Okay, so now we're just looking back <clears throat> at the rest of the system and uh, those 90 degree elbows. Um, sorry, we lost the light. And you can see some of the drives that I have there. They're not yet bent and uh, locked down. And, and of course, all these drives I made on the brake, including the S, the S cleats and the drive connections, all were done on the brake. Okay, that's it for the video. Um, if there's any questions or follow-ups, um, you know, feel free to ask me and I can answer some questions. Um, apologies for the quick video. I can maybe do a second video and make it a little bit more um, professional or clean and non-jerky. If there's any interest or if there's any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, thank you, YouTube. Uh, enjoy.